The North Norfolk coast is one of the UK's greatest places for spotting wildlife, especially birds. More than 300 species have been recorded at Norfolk Wildlife Trust's Cly Marshes Reserve. So come with me as I take a walk around and see what birds and other wonderful wildlife I can find. I've been to Cly several times before, but usually during the late autumn and winter. I was keen to see if there was much difference at the end of summer, which is when this was filmed. Aside from a brief view of a hovering kestrel, I didn't stop on my way to the first hides of the day, a cluster of three thatched huts known as the Central Hides. It's a very different place in summer. Usually in front of this hide is pretty much all water, but now it's pretty much all dry. It's quite windy with the hatch open, so I'm standing away from it. But let's take a look and see what birds are here. Normally, this area is covered in shallow water and although the dryness hadn't deterred all of the wildlife, as you can see from this short clip of a wood pigeon and these distant teal, the wind was whipping through. So I moved to the next hut over and I'm glad that I did. Right in front of the hide, a beautiful kingfisher was resting on a reed. These are resident throughout most of the UK, but will sometimes move towards the coast in colder months, where the water is likely to be more salty and there's less chance of it freezing over. They are capable of traveling further with birds that have been ringed in the UK turning up in France, the Netherlands and Germany in the past. Typically, this one decided to fly away just as I stopped filming, but there was plenty more to see from here, including this female Marsh Harrier, who had either made a kill or found a carcass before I arrived. I couldn't tell what the dead bird was, and as they're able to take on most small and medium sized waders, the choice here is vast. There are now more than 600 breeding pairs of Marsh Harriers in the UK, more than there have been for the last 100 years, but it's still a brilliant bird to see. Eventually, she'd eaten her fill and made off into the distance, scaring all of the pond's other inhabitants as she went. Gradually, they all settled down once more, so let's take a look at what else was out there, starting with a first for the channel, a group of little ring plovers. These were summer visitors to the UK, and will most probably have left by now to spend the winter in sub-Saharan Africa. They are very active, and here you can see how they dash for a few steps before pausing to look for prey, and then dashing once more. Also out in front of the hide were four godwits. I do have a history of getting this wrong, but I believe these two, with their mottled upper parts and shorter, upcurved bills, are bar-tail godwits, whilst these two, with their grey backs and longer, straighter bills, are black-tail godwits. Please correct me in the comments if I've got this wrong again, but I am 95% sure that's right. One bird whose ID I am sure of is the Avocet. With their black and white plumage and very upturned bills, once you've learned this bird's name, there isn't really any confusing it with other species. There are 79 species of wader on the British list, and from here I could see one which I've never knowingly seen before, a green sandpiper. It was very far away, and I couldn't zoom any further than this, but it's the bird that is dark up top, light underneath, and constantly rocking its body. I am a bit guilty of overlooking more common species, especially when I go to a place where there are so many rarer creatures. But I did manage to take some time to film these grey lag geese. These are the only native species of goose that commonly breeds in the UK 
and are the ancestor of most domestic geese breeds. It's thought that they were first domesticated around 3,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. That was a busy 45 minutes with lots of wildlife, but I'm gonna carry on now, make my way towards the beach where hopefully I don't get blown out to sea. Come on. On my way down to the beach, my path took me onto a raised flood barrier. From here, I could see a small herd of cattle, and sure enough, among them were several cattle egrets. These used to be rare visitors to the country, but after an influx of them in late 2007, they started breeding and are now gradually spreading across East Anglia and into the rest of the UK. I don't leave the original sound in these videos and have music in the background and now is an example of why you probably can't hear a single thing I'm saying and if you can it's covered by wind noise soon I made it to the beach but wind was about to become the least of my worries despite the forecast saying it was going to stay dry it started to rain I hurried along the shingle, trying to reach a windbreak hide that points inland, but it offered no shelter and I couldn't see any wildlife from there, so I carried on. Thankfully, about 10 minutes later, I'd made it to where the reserve's pathway leads away from the beach, and a short while after that, I reached the next hide. Just before I got into the hide, I looked to the sky behind it and spotted this flock of spoonbill flying over. A few miles from here is the site where spoonbills first started to nest again in the UK and I've seen at least one every time I've visited in the past couple of years. At last I found a bit of shelter. I've got a whisper because the baby swallows are still up there. Um, I'm quite far away from them to be honest, yeah. And I'm sure they're used to people being in and out of this hide so I'm not going to disturb them by being here. But yeah, I'm going to finish my late breakfast, early lunch and take a look at what wildlife is out here. Oh, there's the mum. I hope I caught that on film. Brilliant. Wildlife hides often become a temporary home for nesting swallows. And although it was late in the year on my visit, this hide was still home to one nest of chicks. It must have been tough going for their parents to find any flying insects to feed them on in the wind and rain, but they did visit a few times whilst I was sat there, so they must have been finding something. Out in front of the hide, most of the birds were resting and probably waiting for better weather, including a single spoonbill. If you take a close look, you'll see its unique shaped bill, which has evolved to allow it to filter small creatures out of the water. In the distance, lots of cormorants were roosting. These birds can have a bad reputation among anglers and fish farmers, but I would guess that these individuals mostly travel out to sea for their food, as the coastline here is rich in marine life. Several other species were out on the pool, but any footage I got of them is far too shaky to show you, so let's carry on around the reserve. In previous visits, I've seen quite a lot of wildlife from this pathway, but not today. However, around the corner, the wildlife was actually on the path itself. Several of these small common toads were crossing the path and moving in the pathside vegetation. At around two centimeters long, these are almost definitely this year's young and would have hatched into tadpoles in some of the freshwater ditches and pools that scatter the reserve. They spend the winter in a state very similar to hibernation, 
and it's likely that these would have been on their way to find suitable places when I saw them. For toads, this will always be on land, unlike some frogs which will spend the winter underwater. Slowly and very carefully, I made my way to the next and final hide of the day, a place known as Bishop's Hide. It was unusually quiet in front of the hide, apart from a couple of familiar faces, including a green sandpiper, probably the same bird I'd seen earlier in the day. Only a couple of pairs are thought to breed in the UK each year, whilst almost a thousand visit during the winter. Interestingly, unlike almost all other waders, green sandpipers often nest in trees instead of on the ground. I'm glad I got a better view of it, as since this was filmed, I've also filmed a common sandpiper. Keep an eye out for that in my next wildlife walk video to see how they are different. The only other species I managed to film from Bishop's Hide were these two ducks. I recently made a video about how to identify the ducks of the UK, so I hope you've identified these already. They are gadwall. You can tell this from their white wing patches and general grey colouring. It wasn't far from here to the reserves cafe with a view, where I enjoyed a well-deserved cake and coffee. And where today's video sadly comes to an end. That was a brilliant wildlife walk and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please scroll down to the comments and leave your thoughts to help YouTube recommend this video to more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.